Hello comrades and welcome back to the Shanka show. Today we will talk about lotteries in the Soviet Union. When I was a kid uh, back in 1970s, I remember uh, several Soviet lotteries really well because uh, my dad every time when he was getting paid at his factory and at that time I believe he worked at the Antono factory. He was a spray painter at the uh, airplane factory Antonov that was making AN style airplanes. Um, every time he was getting paid, he brought at least two or four lottery tickets, um, so-called Dosaaf Lotteria, D-O-S-A-A-F, which uh, translates like Volunteer Society Supporting Army, Air Force, and Fleet. Those tickets cost 50 cents. Lottery was happening four times a year. Uh, but, interestingly thing, it wasn't popular also. People were forced to buy them at their places of work. So actually the union boss uh, will be standing right there next to the lady who will be um, dashing out cash. Of course, in Soviet Union, we didn't have credit cards or checks. Everything was paid in cash. So he will be asking people to buy at least two tickets, so there will be a ruble, or four tickets, at least two rubles. So even if you didn't really want to participate in the lottery, most people were forced to buy some of those lottery tickets. Interesting fact that after the October Revolution of 1917, when Bolsheviks won and took the power in Russia, lotteries were outlawed. They were looked at as some kind of leftovers of capitalistic society and a new, brand new Soviet society. There were no classes and the society that marching towards communism, they thought that lotteries are just stupid and don't make any sense. So after 1917, lotteries were forbidden in Soviet Union or Soviet Russia. But as soon as, as quick as 1921, uh, there were very first uh, Soviet lotteries uh, started. Uh, there was a hunger in the, in the country, in Ukraine, as well as in the Volga region. So that was the first Soviet lottery in 1921. It's called Pomgol, uh, which means Pomaj Galadayshim. It's a lottery to help uh, starving people in Soviet Union. And it was an interesting trend. A lot of things got uh, canceled or destroyed or just uh, forbidden after a revolution. For example, I guess the Bolsheviks uh, leaders were so optimistic about the future. Uh, so they decided all it takes uh, to build a new society, just destroy it to the uh, bare ground the old society, which the famous international zone, that's the words in that song. Весь мир насилие мы разрушим, до основания, а затем мы наш, мы новый мир построим. Кто был ничем, тот стал никем. Sorry for this long quote, but it's basically what the song is about. We're gonna destroy the old world all the way to, to basically like to nothing, and on the ruins of the old world, we'll bring, we'll build our brand new world and uh, everyone who was nothing before will become everything. So police was uh, dismantled, army was dismantled. A lot of things were just like, we don't need it anymore since we got this new society when there's no classes. But soon after, they had to restore army, they had to restore police, although it was called militia, and they had to restore lotteries. And after that, Soviet government introduced uh, quite a few different lotteries. As I mentioned, they already had the one uh, to help starving people, Palm Gold. Uh, another one was an interesting lottery called OZ. And uh, that was a lottery by um, Society of Protecting Jewish Workers. And actually what was going on is they were trying to raise money through the lottery to move Jewish people out of the country and uh, help them to start collective farms and work on land. But that didn't work really well. For some reason, most Jewish people didn't want to work the land. And 
later they all uh, came back back to the big cities to do what they like to do you know to be uh engineers teachers and so on they didn't want to be farmers so that was an interesting situation this lottery called oz but most lotteries were used by uh, soviet government to raise money uh, for defense or building new uh, military airplanes or tanks and the most famous was the Osovia Him, uh, which is also uh, like a, a association to help um, suggest or so cooperation with the uh, air air force and the chemical defense so kind of like a civil, civil defense so there was a lot of lotteries going on before World War II uh, is to raise money to build uh, Soviet army and Soviet self-defense. There were no lotteries after a war it was over. From, so from 1945 till 1955, uh, we had no lotteries. Then once again, uh, they started having DOSAF lottery. So um, the Osovia him that I mentioned uh, before the war, later it became the called DOSAF, which is uh, organization to support army, air force, and fleet. And as the lotteries that my dad participated, but as I said, they weren't popular at all. <clears throat> Although the tickets you could purchase in the bank and the newspaper uh, outlets and the bookstores, but because people really didn't want to buy them, they actually were forced to purchase those um those off tickets and that lottery was called cash and goods lottery so what it means uh, you could win cash or you can win items like cars motorcycles bikes refrigerators uh, tape recorders tvs and so on so for example in 1978 uh, the lottery, those off lottery, uh, had available 800 cars, Volga, which is the most expensive, the most luxurious Soviet car. Uh, the price was around 12,000 rubles. Uh, Moskvich, which is a cheaper car and not as good as Lada or Zhiguli. And Zaporozhets, ZAZ, which is, was the, uh, least expensive the most basic air-cooled uh, car in the Soviet Union. So besides 800 cars, uh, they also offered 1,280 so-called heavy motorcycles, which is um, Ural or Dnieper motorcycles based on the 1930s design BMW. Usually those uh, were produced with a sidecar. So those were, I think, about maybe 4,000 rubles. Uh, also, they offered uh, light motorcycles, Ij, uh, it was 1,440, and the rest were bikes and tens of, uh, so tens of thousands other different items. Uh, also, a lot of people would get money rewards. So that's what, for example, what uh, part, what people could win in 1978 uh, playing those off lottery. Now, they used only a quarter of money uh, for the prices. So government would collect, for example, a million of rubles uh, from the selling lottery tickets and only 250,000 will go towards uh, prizes. The rest will be kept uh, for uh, expenses with supporting Soviet Army, Air Force and Fleet. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I hope you learned something new. And as always, please don't forget to uh, put the like under this video, share with your friends, and if you can, please support my show uh, on patreon.com. Uh, every dollar helps. Hello, comrades, and welcome back to the Shanka Show. Today we'll talk about lotteries in the Soviet Union. And I remember then when it was a time to... Um, so called Rosiglish, I even don't know how to translate it to English. So when it was a time to check uh, the results of the lottery, it would be published in a newspaper. So we were getting a newspaper called Trud, which means labor. And that's where the uh, results, the whole page will be uh, taken over just the list of numbers. 
for the lottery tickets because each lottery ticket would have a two number. We have a series and then a, a smaller three digit number. And everyone will be checking out if they won or not. So you see if your ticket matches the series first, the loan number. And if it does, you win at least one ruble. So the cost of ticket was 50 kopecks and the uh, smallest uh, prize will be one ruble. And of course, then if next three digit will match, then you win a prize. And that will be, for example, said, the most expensive prize you can get will be Volga car, which is worth about 12,000 rubles. Huge money. It's approximately close to 10 years of the salary for the regular person working in Soviet Union. I remember helping my dad to match the numbers from our lottery tickets to the numbers published in the newspaper. But unfortunately, besides the uh, several one ruble uh, wins, we never won anything. And I think it's one of the reasons why this lottery wasn't popular is because the Soviet government never bothered to actually advertise the winners. Like, for example, here in the United States, every time someone wins big uh, jackpot in the uh, lottery or in the, all those, uh, what is it called, mega balls or something like that, you could tell that I don't play lotteries here. Um, they advertise as hardcore. They always tease people how huge the prize. So there's a lot of advertising going on to remind people, hey, you can win big. In Soviet Union, it was like a black hole. You buy those tickets and... The only way you can find out that someone wants something is the rumors between, you know, in the, in the neighborhood or at work. There was never anything published like, hey, there's a story, there's a worker from such and such factory got a free car. So I guess it was a failure on the part of the Soviet government that didn't bother to advertise really well. And that's maybe one of the reason that people didn't want to play because they just didn't get a feedback about people actually getting lucky and winning something. Another lottery we had was just called like that, uh, it's a, it is a cash and goods lottery. It cost a little bit cheaper, only 30 kopecks. Uh, but, and you could win the most expensive items will be a Lada car, which is cost about 9,000 rubles. Another interesting details about uh, lotteries, I couldn't find confirmation online, but I remember the stories that, for example, if you got so lucky and you won a car, for example, Volga or Lada, you know, if you have, a, you can get a car, which is already really cool, but you could actually make more money if you don't want a car, you know, then you can get just money for that car. But because it was such a uh, shortage of vehicles, there were people willing to pay you extra two, three thousand rubles for that lottery, lucky lottery ticket so they can buy a car. Uh, so the people who didn't want to wait and another kind of people who wanted to buy those lottery tickets, the people who did some illegal uh, business. So maybe they had a, uh, like they call it Tsehavik, so the person that uh, has a little uh, underground, we'll call it factory, since there was against the law to uh, produce shoes or clothing or do anything, any kind of business in Soviet Union, but still people did it. And so those people were hiding their money, and one of the way was to um, launder their illegal uh, earnings would be to purchase a lottery ticket and like, hey, so if if the government has a question where the money came from, like, yeah, I won in the lottery. There's a official, there's my lottery ticket and there's the car I bought. I couldn't find confirmation, but I remember this talk that if you uh, want a lottery ticket for Volga car and you don't want to really have a car, you can sell that ticket for like 20,000 rubles to people who uh, need to hide their uh, illegal earnings and uh, get a car. So that's kind of interesting details. But I said, unfortunately, I couldn't find any confirmation, but I, I definitely remember stories about it. So now since the internet is available and a lot of people uh, post their uh, memories uh, about life in Soviet Union, and I found quite a few interesting stories from way back when people uh, shared about their winnings. Of course, if those stories were published in newspapers, 
in 70s and 80s, maybe the lottery would be selling way better. But I read stories how people like, hey, I went to the movie theater and uh, they, instead of change, they made me to take a lottery ticket and I won uh, a refrigerator or, you know, similar stories. So like people got forced to buy those tickets and then they won something. So they said it was kind of cool thing happening. But as I said, it's just bizarre that even in the movie theater, they will make you to take a lottery ticket instead of giving you change. They're just like, hey, so what about instead of 50 copics, I just give you these lottery tickets because I need to sell them. Another interesting story I read, <laughs> it's funny. So, uh, you know, in the big cities, you have a tall apartment building and of course you have Dvornik. That's the person who takes care of uh, areas. So he sweeps the grounds he cleans the uh, stairwell and the hallways so the dvornik uh <laughs> this guy is I, I like this story a lot so in the soviet union they had quite often a so-called newspaper displays so there will be a display where they, they attach a fresh new newspaper and it will be hanging there all day and people who don't subscribe to the newspaper they just come stay by the newspaper board and read the new fresh newspaper and then, of course, it being removed uh, in the evening and, or in the morning and a new newspaper goes up. So what this guy did, he would, um, you know, he was in charge of cleaning that area where the newspaper stand was. So uh, every time there will be new uh, results come up for the uh, new lottery, he will quietly replace the new fresh newspaper to the old one with the old results. And then, of course, people come and they will compare their lottery tickets with the numbers. And, of course, now numbers don't match because you have an old newspaper, which is, you know, maybe from three months ago. But, of course, not a lot of people pay attention that it's on the wrong date. And, of course, then they throw away their tickets. And conveniently, there will be a trash uh, bucket right here next to this stand. And then the Dvornik will recover all those uh, lottery tickets and uh, see if he can win something. So, but he got arrested. But it's interesting how like little scam to replace the newspaper with the old one and then try to recover uh, tossed away uh, lottery tickets, see if he can win something. Another unusual lottery that we had in Soviet Union was the so-called book lottery. As I uh, tell you stories, uh, you probably got already this feeling that uh, Life in Soviet Union was life when you constantly short on stuff. You always have deficit. Uh, so the book lottery, uh, the cost was 25 kopecks. And in Soviet Union, we didn't have a 25 kopeck coin. Uh, that was a difference. We had 20 and then you have 5. So uh, if you play those lotteries, they were instant. And you could uh, win uh, some good book that usually you just can't buy because it's deficit. Uh, so people would play those lotteries in bookstores in order to win some uh, book, rare book that they can't just buy. So those are so-called Knizhne Altarev uh, book lottery. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I hope you learned something new. And as always, please don't forget to uh, put the like under this video, share with your friends, and if you can, please support my show uh, on patreon.com uh, every dollar helps hello comrades and welcome back to the Shanka show today we'll talk about lotteries in the Soviet Union uh, we are moving on now the most popular lottery so called sport lotto sport and lotto uh, started in 1970 so, so one year before I was born and that was kind of like a and they say it was experimental. Uh, what a sport lotto, you have, uh, you need to guess six numbers out of 49 numbers available. So from one to 49, you need to uh, pick six numbers. So the sport lotto ticket, ticket will have uh, three parts, A, B, and C, but it's A, B, V. You fill them the same way. So you cross six numbers, then you, uh, take a uh, part and keep for yourself and then you drop uh, B and uh, C 
into the special box. Then of course you have a rosegrish. So they have a big bowl with the 49, um, like big glass bowl, and then you have a 49 uh, balls with numbers and they randomly fall out or some person w moves them out out of the big uh, glass ball and it's six numbers and if you match all six you can win up to 25,000 rubles so it was a huge money and that lottery became super popular they were selling close to 10 million tickets every time and uh, that money were going to build new stadiums and everything else to support sports. Um, and, uh, so it was a uh, 80% of the budget for sports in Soviet Union was covered by sport lotto lottery. Um, in the beginning it was only 5,000 ruble max. Later it became 25,000 rubles. So then of course people were trying to come up with different systems, how to guess the numbers right, but they had to guess correctly six out of 49 and of course then if you guess five you get smaller uh, amount of money if you i think three it started with three you, you might get like five rubles then you know four you get more money five more and six that's your top um, price that you get uh, for playing that lottery so as i mentioned that the sport lotto lottery started in 1970 and in 1974, for the very first time, they showed uh, the process of, you know, picking the numbers on live TV. And that was huge. You know, people really liked. It was kind of fun. You sit with your tickets in front of TV and you watch there's uh, winning uh, balls coming out. And uh, then you see if you got lucky. And said that, that lottery was super popular. So in 1976, so six years later, they came up with the uh, different version. In this one, you had to guess five numbers out of 36. So instead of six out of 49, this one was five out of 36. And a similar idea, you have to cross the numbers and uh, keep uh, one of the uh, A uh, part of your ticket and then the rest you submit. If you win, uh, you have to go to the local uh, Zbirkasa. That was the only type of bank we had in the Soviet Union called Zbirkasa. You bring your passport, you bring your uh, part of your ticket, and that's how you can uh, get your reward. And if you're interested in the topic of the lotteries and especially Sport Lato, um, there was a really uh, famous and popular movie called Sport Lato 82, which is 1982. Uh, it was mega popular in the Soviet Union, it's like a comedy, and about 52 million people watched that movie, Sport Lato 82. I strongly recommend you to check it out. I don't remember if I watched it, so I'm probably going to watch it too. And we'll post the link uh, below this video. Uh, so this is the movie, Sport Lato 82, that I recommend you guys to watch to get idea about um, uh, Soviet lotteries and how they showed it in the movies. Another type of lottery we had in the Soviet Union was so-called Sprint. Uh, it can, they came out with it in 1977, so I was six years old. I remember that one really well. It was so-called Instant Lottery, and the price for the ticket was 50 kopecks. And I remember there would be just a lady uh, sitting, uh, uh, selling those uh, tickets. Usually, uh, they will be on the, like on, attached on one rope, and uh, you pay the money. She gives you or you pick the ticket. Of course, you don't see if it's a winning ticket or not. Then you need to uh, kind of rip it open. And the prices will be 1 ruble, 5 rubles, uh, 10 rubles. Those small winnings, you can take it right here on the spot. You just return a ticket to the lady. And she gives you the money. Anything above 10 rubles, you need to take your passport and go to this Biarcasa, go to the local bank. Uh, to get a bigger uh, price. I remember playing that one a couple of times and actually I recall that I, I bought a ticket, I won a ruble I, she, uh, and I played it again uh, and I lost everything. So that was kind of disappointment. And the one time essentially my friend Yura, uh, who still lives in Ukraine, he told me the story that uh, 
he was uh, standing kind of in front of this table looking on the sprint uh, lottery tickets. And suddenly there was an older guy uh, stood by him and he kind of pointed and said, uh, pick that one right there. And my friend did and he won five rubles. So he got all excited and, you know, he kind of like looking at him and say, kind of like, hey, point me again. And the guy said, there's no uh, winnings anymore on this pile. So that was kind of bizarre, but that's how my friend uh, won five rubles on the Sprint Instant Lottery. And the last lottery that I actually remember really well, uh, it, it was right before the end of the Soviet Union in 1987. Uh, there was a new kind of lottery called Sport Prognoz. So it's like you, um, it's a sport forecast. So you're trying to guess uh, the results of, uh, usually there was a soccer game. So, um, we had a championship, a uh, soccer championship in Soviet Union and, uh, different teams. So then you guess, uh, the results, who gonna win, who gonna lose. I think maybe even have to try to guess the scores. And of course, if you guess correctly, then you win the prize. I remember that on several friends of mine who were big into sports. They played hard. Uh, this game, I wasn't really much in sports at that time, watching sports. But that was the last uh, Soviet lottery, uh, Sport Prognoz in 1987. So this is the end of my story about lotteries in Soviet Union. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I hope you learned something new. And as always, please don't forget to uh, put the like under this video, share with your friends. And if you can, please support my show uh, on Patreon.com. Uh, every dollar helps. Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. Comrade Sergei is here, and back in 1971, I was born in the USSR. Меня зовут Сергей, я родился в Советском Союзе. The topic of today's video is gambling in the Soviet Union. I already made several videos on this topic, and if you somehow miss them, I will post the link in the comment section so you can check that out. Today I'll tell you about Spezialna Olimpijska Lotteria Sprint, Special Olympic Lottery Sprint, which was kind of like an instant lottery. This instant lottery sprint was introduced in October 1976 and it became instant hit. In the first four days, just in Moscow, there were sold two million tickets. By the end of the year, in Moscow and Kiev, 12 million tickets were sold. The ticket looked kind of interesting. It's kind of a little tiny rectangular envelope, which you need to rip one end off, unfold it, and inside it's your ticket. And of course, then you can win a prize or uh, lose everything. As you see at this picture, at one end it had a hole. So quite often um, people would use the rope to put these tickets on this rope and it will be hanging. So you pay money and then you rip one of those uh, tickets off the rope, unfold it, and then you see if you want anything. There were two types of sprint lottery. One was 50 kopecks each and another one was one ruble. The difference was that there was three times more cars possible to win if you buy a more expensive ticket. And once again, we need to look at the cost. You know, is it a lot of money, one ruble? Well, you could purchase five loaves of bread for one ruble. So if you say in America right now you can buy a loaf of bread, you know, for two dollars, you're talking about ten bucks, that's the cost of the ticket. But if you look at one ruble as 20 bus rides, because back in the USSR to ride the bus was five kopecks, and I just looked up in New York City currently, you can ride a bus for two dollars seventy-five cents. So now we're talking one ruble is equal pretty much close to 55 bucks. That's a lot of money. So when you buy a ticket, and I played this lottery a little bit, not much, you know, you rip it apart and then you unfold the ticket and most often you will see без выигрыша. So that's without winning, без выигрыша. Or your ticket could say билет sprint. So sprint ticket, so that means you can go and take another lottery ticket and try once again. The smallest price was one ruble and that's what happened with me. I bought a ticket for 50 kopecks and I won one ruble. So I got excited and 
bought two more tickets with my winnings and I lost that ruble and I think I, after that I didn't try again. I was quite disappointed. Other prices included 5 rubles, 10 rubles, 25 rubles, 100 and the largest cash price was 10,000 rubles. A lot of money. But of course the most desirable price was Volga car which at that time the cost was around 11, 12,000 rubles and since we didn't have sales tax if you want a car you just get a car you don't have to pay any sales tax or anything like you have to do it here in america but of course since we had a huge shortage of cars in the soviet union there were people mostly of course uh, our comrades from southern states from georgia armenia azerbaijan they were willing to pay up to fifteen thousand rubles sometimes twenty thousand rubles for the winning ticket for the car because they wanted to buy a car without waiting so another option would be if you want a car you just resell the ticket to someone who had money on hand i actually read a story online one guy with his friends uh, back in the soviet days they you know, pulled the money got 500 rubles bought a box of this lottery tickets so a thousand tickets and they spent all evening drinking beer and open up these tiny envelopes hoping to win the volga car and then the plan was to resell it to georgians for 15,000 rubles and make a lot of money. Unfortunately, there was no uh, price of a, a car in that box. And he said they actually lost money doing that. Surprise, surprise. As I mentioned earlier, this Sprint Instant Lottery became instantly popular. In 1977, 1978, they sold around 480 million tickets and government earned around 100 million rubles. And those money were actually used to build stadiums and other uh, sports facility for the Moscow Olympics of 1980. The main problem with this instant lottery is it created a lot of trash because you know you rip this little tiny envelope, you see the ticket says Bez Vigresha, no winnings. And if you don't have a trash can around, people just will throw it on the floor. And I remember uh, by these kiosks, the one they sold is in instant uh, lotteries, there was always a lot of trash on the floor. People just buy it. Then I threw it on the floor and they hop on the bus. I found another interesting story online about this lottery. So one of the guys who actually was running this sprint lottery said there's a, someone is uh, looking uh, to talk to you. And he said there was a person of Caucasian nationality. So it's kind of funny in America, they called white people Caucasian. In Soviet Union, if it's a Caucasian person, it's probably Georgian or Armenian or Azerbaijani. So this guy uh, said, Boss, I'm it's called Nachalnik. So, boss, my son is getting married and I want to give him as a present Volga car, but I just can't buy it anywhere. Everywhere there's a waiting list and I need it right now. Do you mind to sell me 100,000 tickets, but promise me that there is a car in there? So, the guy has to explain, like, hey, this is why it's called lottery. You never know where is the price. So, this is a Georgian guy. Caucasian guy said, what kind of businessman are you if you don't know where is the ticket with Volga car? And he left. <laughs> A quick side note, so if a guy was willing to buy 100,000 tickets, would say for 50 kopecks, he was willing to pay 50,000 rubles for 12,000 ruble car just to get it right away. Of course, we had other type of lotteries, but those you buy a ticket for one ruble and a lot of times people were forced to buy like i remember my dad would constantly bring at least four to five lottery tickets because when he get paid salary they will make them to buy right away a couple of those dasaf tickets and then you have to wait when it's time for rozegrish and then they publish in the newspaper the list of the numbers and if there's any prizes and we won only a couple of times one ruble bag we never won any prizes no refrigerator no car but you had to wait sprint was instant gratification and that's why it was so popular uh, among the soviet people amazingly enough some people actually collected those uh, bad tickets the one that said bizvigresha no winnings and now they're available on ebay you can buy a piece of soviet lottery history hello boys and girls and welcome back to shanka show the place where we travel back in time to explore everyday life in the Soviet Union. 
If you're new to my channel, my name is Sergei Sputnikov, and back in 1971, I was born in the USSR. Меня зовут Сергей Спутников, и я родился в Советском Союзе. In today's video, I'll tell you some very interesting information about what could happen if someone wins a lottery in the Soviet Union. If you're interested in the topic of gambling and lotteries in the Soviet Union, I already made several videos on that topic, but unfortunately, YouTube completely ignores that, and they didn't uh, gather enough steam, so they just buried somewhere deep in Oshanka Show channel with hardly 2,000 views per video. So I'll post the links below this video if you missed it somehow and want to explore more. But in today's video, we're going to talk about so-called Denizhna Vishivaya Lotteria. So that's a cash and merchandise lottery, which was quite popular in the Soviet Union. And I mean popular, like people were forced to purchase lottery tickets. I already mentioned in my video that my father brought two lottery tickets every time he got paid at work. So the cost of the lottery ticket was 50 kopecks and he was forced to buy for one ruble at least two lottery tickets, those cash and merchandise lottery. As you may guess, cash and merchandise lottery meant that you can win some cash prices, I believe up to 5,000 rubles, and you can win some goods, which the most expensive and the most desirable was Volga car, which cost was retail cost was 15,000 rubles, as well it could be radios, uh, tents, flashlights, and a lot of other goods. Some of them were deficit that you won't be able to just buy at the regular store. My family never had any luck with lotteries. I mean, we won a couple of times one ruble prize, which is the smallest cash prize. But otherwise, we never won anything decent to remember, you know, a refrigerator or radio receiver. And I'm not talking about motorcycle or a car. But if you happen to be one of those lucky comrades and you won a car, you had two options. You can get a car or you could cash out the lottery ticket and get the value of the car. So in case of Volga, you'll get 15,000 rubles cash. Or if you want something like Zhiguli Vaz, there'll be 9,000 rubles. And you need to remember in Soviet Union, we didn't have a sales tax. So like here, sometimes people win a car in casino, but they can't afford to pay sales tax if it's some expensive Mercedes or Lamborghini. In Soviet Russia, you don't have to pay that. You could get a car and it's pretty much your expenses done there. Today's story is based on a newspaper article published sometimes in the middle of 80s, and it's called The Journey of a Winning Lottery Ticket, Bilet Putishestvenik. The story in this article reminded me of the old movie from 1993 called 20 Bucks. It's kind of like that, but with a different twist. So here we go. The journey of a winning lottery ticket. Mrs. K, who lives in Kiev, played a cash and merchandise lottery, so Denizhna Vishivaya Lotteria, and won a Volga car, which I told you retail price was 15,000 rubles, a lot of money. So this lucky lady went to the local branch of Zbirkasa, so this is Soviet Savings Bank, and I also have a video on this topic, I'll place Link below this video. So she went to the local Zbirkasa where the clerks, last name Dorfman and Reichman, congratulated the lucky winner and paid her the cash value of her car instantly. So lady, instead of a car, she decided I'll take cash and she went to the savings bank and cashed it out instantly. And here we need to pause for some comments. So reading this article, anyone from the Soviet Union just by reading last names, Dorfman and Reichman, would understand that those two persons, you can tell here the male or female, that clerks, they work at Zvirkasa, they were Jewish people. Because the only people who had last name ended with Man, they'll be Jewish people. So here I kind of see it's a little anti-Semitic tone going on, because look, this naive lady went to cash out and these Jews right away jumped an opportunity to make extra money. So Dorfman and Reichman, uh, so this is anti-Semitic little hint going on. And once again, I have videos about Jewish people in Soviet Union. Links will be also below this video. And I also need to say a couple of words about this lucky Mrs. K who won a car. Just like my mom, she was very naive and she didn't have good friends. 
because usually people knew that if you want a car, there was several ways to make more money than the face value of that ticket, of that car. And we'll see later in the story. But no one told her, so she just happily ran to the local Zbirkasa to sell her ticket and, and cash out. So let's see what happened next. This article says, Most of our readers won't notice any criminal activity in such occurrence. In reality, Dorfman and Reichman abused their job position. They used the word злоупотребление служебного положения. So that was a quite often this abuse of your job position, so you take advantage of the place of your work to have some gain, usually, you know, do you gain some stuff or you gain some money or bribes. So they abused their job position and ignored the rules of accepting the winning lottery tickets. And my guess there will be some special form when the government, as Birkasa, purchases the winning ticket, but what they did, and going back to the article, they simply gave the lady money using Sbirkasa cash. As you remember, I told her many times, we did not use checks in the Soviet Union. We were basically cash society, like my parents always got salary in cash. So they gave the lady the money and then instantly resold the lottery ticket to a person with the last name Oganisyan from Yerevan, which is Soviet Armenia. And once again, Oganisyan, when the last name ends with Yan, it pretty much was obvious that person is Armenian. So already it was system in place that they right away called this Oganisyan guy and told him, hey, we got a ticket. And so the guy right away came and bought it from them. It's kind of like what happened in American banks sometimes. I know there's a People, they have a money collectors, like friends, and if some person brings some old American dollars, you know, those old silver certificates or something like that, they will buy it and then will call the collector guy and sell him, I don't know, for profit or not. But this is also happening in the United States. But here we're talking about purchasing a lottery ticket and reselling for profit. So my guess, they maybe made 5,000 rubles on the top, so they purchased ticket, this winning ticket for 15,000 rubles and resold it right away for 20,000 rubles to this comrade Aganisyan from Armenia. And I mentioned before that we had a lot of jokes about people from the Soviet South that they were rich. And once again, video link below this video. So this comrade Aganisyan with his body, Muradyan, also Armenian, they took that winning ticket and they flew to Ashgabat, which is the capital of Turkmenistan. At that time was Soviet Socialist Republic of Turkmenistan, of course. In Ashgabat, they sold that lottery ticket for more than five times than the price of brand new Volga. So 15,000 times five, it's 75,000. So my guess for 80,000 rubles. So they resold that winning ticket that two clerks purchased for 15,000, added some of their money, resold it, and these two guys flew with the ticket to Ashabad and resold again for 80,000 rubles. My parents both had to work around 20 years to have a combined income of 80,000 rubles. And this guy in Ashabad paid 80,000 rubles for a lottery ticket in order to get a Volga car that had a retail price of 15,000 rubles. This is crazy. Unfortunately, the article doesn't specify how the people got caught, but they did get uh, caught. And as a result, those two clerks and Zbirkasa, Dorfman got five years in prison. So I guess she was the main person running that scheme at the local savings bank department. Her friend Reichman got three and a half years in prison. Uh, those two Armenian um, traveling guys got two and a half years each. And it says other participants of this speculation will be punished as well. So there's an interesting journey of the winning lottery ticket. It started in Kiev, Ukraine, Soviet Ukraine, $15,000 uh, sale, dollar ruble sale in Zberkasa, resale for 20000 Fly to Ashgabat, resale for 80000 This is how desperate some people were to buy a brand new car. 
And I need to remind you that speculatia or speculation was a serious crime in the Soviet Union. So if you purchase item in one place, take it to a different place and resell it for profit, it was a crime. As you see, just for doing this, buying a winning lottery ticket and reselling it, person got five years in prison. So quite serious crime. And this is what was a big deal about fighting against speculanti e speculatia, so people who trying to make profit by reselling goods. That was a criminal activity back in the Soviet days. And if you happen to be interested in collecting any of those lottery tickets, I discovered that itsy.com has quite a few of those, and they're pretty reasonable, about $2 per ticket. And of course, if I knew back in the 80s when my dad was bringing those lottery tickets and we never won and threw them away, if I would just collect them, now I could probably sell them for a tidy uh, speculatia profit, but, you know, and I never would occur to my mind that in the future, distant future, people will be interested in purchasing those silly uh, Soviet lottery tickets. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe learn something new. As always, don't forget to like it, uh, share with your friends, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey guys, just want to let you know I'm working on my next video that's going to be a review of this book, Black on Red, My 44 Years Inside of Soviet Union by Robert Robinson. Thanks again, Phil from Columbus. Uh, he sent me this book so I can read it and review it. So it's going to be several videos. I'm actually, I picked quite a few interesting parts and I'm going to talk about it. But tonight I just want to show you something else, another uh, artifact from my Soviet childhood. Uh, this is a lottery ticket that... One of those long rainy days that was nothing else to do in the village. We had no TV, no internet, of course. So I was just drawing. Uh, so this is a lottery ticket from 1984. I was 13 years old. And this is what my uh, handwriting looked like back then. And once again, I'm a lefty that was um, forced to switch to the right hand. And it's dedicated to the launching of the planer. We launched a little airplane back then.